SCP-093 Mirror Test 4 Color Yellow D-Class Subjects No Longer Authorized for Testing Testing focus has been shifted to data collection after analyzing the articles brought back from the previous three tests to better understand the fate of the world accessed by SCP-093 and determine if safeguards or practices are required for our own world. Analysis of the brown fluid on the clothing of the lost escort team member has been filed with other recovered articles. Dr. has volunteered for this test, as out of the possible candidates, he was able to cause SCP-093 to undergo a new color change. There is no evidence in Dr. X's background of any illegal or criminal behavior, nor of any psychological problems. When presented to the mirror, the view changed to that of a cubicle office environment. For this test, Dr. X opted to use the wireless video system and forego the pulley return system, stating he was confident he would be safe as none of the torso creatures have been witnessed within a building where the mirror's destination showed. Video feed commences after Dr. X has crossed the mirror. As with prior tests, SCP-093's current color, yellow, tinges all video material. Camera flickers to life and pans across a series of plain white cubicle constructs. Approximately 30 are visible. At the far end from the point of entry is an office module built into the wall with frosted glass walls and a glass door. Dr. <coughs> approaches this door and investigates the etched writing on it. Senior Manager Stan Lee Millimits. The door is unlocked. Dr. <coughs> enters the office and examines the desk. A coffee cup is on the desk, a dark brown stain covering half of the inside as the liquid evaporated. There is a donut on a plate, which Dr. <coughs> picks up and lobs at a wall. On impact, it thumps like a rock and falls. A file cabinet in the corner of the room draws Dr. X's attention, and he goes through each shelf, one at a time, stopping in the second drawer and taking out a file, then going back to the first and taking out two others. Continuing to the third and fourth drawers, he withdraws four additional files and spreads them all out on the desk. The files are blue filing folders, and he points with his finger and camera at a symbol on each of the praying hands, stating aloud for the camera that all other files are stored in yellow folders. The blue folders are placed in his field kit. Camera attention is turned to the PC on the desk that is logged in and functional. Dr. <coughs> comments aloud wondering where these devices are getting their power from, as he has noticed no power outlets. This PC's desktop contains the logo of Faithful OS, and even has sounds, clicks of the mouse followed by soft hymn-like hums, and opening of icons followed by angelic bells. The PC fails to yield any useful information to Dr. <coughs> who abandons it and leaves the office. Approaching the other end of the office floor, Dr. <coughs> presses a button on the wall for the elevator and enters finding he is on the 34th floor of a building having an unusual number scheme. The keypad layout goes from negative 115 to 115 and includes all floors. Before pressing a floor button, Dr. <coughs> requests that the wireless video transponder be moved to the elevator and replaced with a construction cone to mark the entry point. A second transponder unit is placed outside the elevator, and Control is instructed to recover the second unit and seal the test chamber should something happen to him. Then, when all is arranged, he presses the button for floor negative 115. The descent down the elevator is long, consuming 15 minutes. During this time, the camera experiences one malfunction where the image jerks and turns to snow.
restoring to show 14 other figures in the elevator with Dr. <coughs> as video pans around, all of whom move as he moves to allow him space. They remain for 35 seconds, then the camera flickers to snow and returns. Dr. <coughs> is now alone in the elevator, dancing as is assumed by the ducks and sways of the video feed. Dr. <coughs> pauses to comment on a rising stench coming from below. At this point, the elevator has reached floor negative 108. Dr. <coughs> presses the negative 110 to interrupt the descent down and exits when that floor is reached. The elevator doors open to an enclosed observation deck with several PCs and chairs. All PCs appear to have power. The ceiling to this deck is also glass, and above it another deck is visible. Dr. <coughs> approaches the monitoring stations and checks one of the PC screens. On the screen is the faithful OS logo and a video feed toggling between four different views. The first view is a room of tubes similar to those found in Test Violet, which number in the thousands. The second view is a closer-up view of these tubes, as a camera glides in front of each to monitor the contents. All tubes the camera passes by are broken. The third view is facing the opposite direction as a camera glides vertically, checking each observation station. A total of ten can be counted, and Dr. <coughs> is visible as the camera passes by his own station. Looking up, a hovering camera unit with no visible means of propulsion glides up past him. The fourth view shows the ground floor below the observation deck, where a single astonishingly large torso being is crawling in circles, bumping into walls and changing directions. From the camera feed, the creature's estimated size is six stories. Returning attention to the contents of the PC, Dr. <coughs> moves the video log aside to see a simple text editor that was hidden behind it. A printout of this text was recovered and filed in the field kit. The printout directed Dr. <coughs> to a safe on floor 54 and provided a combination. Dr. <coughs> leaves the observation deck and proceeds to 54 without event, arriving on a cubicled office floor. He proceeds to the desk mentioned in the document and found a safe hidden beneath a desk undisturbed. The combination provided opens the safe and reveals a notebook, filed in the field kit, and a peculiar revolver that has been returned as in addition to the 24 rounds of ammo found with it. Dr. proceeds back to the elevator without event and returns to 34. Given the sheer number of floors available to explore, and the vital information obtained from the observation deck, the test is considered over and equipment is retrieved. Before returning through the entry point, Dr. <coughs> investigates a terminal nearby that has power, and finds it shows the exact same screen as the one on negative 110 shows. It is theorized that the author of the note installed a network virus to propagate it through the building so any PC on that network would be found and the information discovered. Dr. <coughs> returns through the entry point and the mirror returns to a reflective surface. All materials filed with other SCP-093 recovered materials. Analysis of and the ammunition for it postponed for reason that it would require deconstruction of one of the rounds, and they may be beneficial until testing of SCP-093 is resolved. Video ends. Yellow Test – Recovered Materials The fourth test into E-093 provided us with documentation assumed to be written by a technician in either a medical or government facility. <coughs> Found in the safe is being considered for SCP classification, primarily due to the composition of the ammunition found with it and the advanced firing mechanism attached to what should be a very base firearm. PC Printout I did not trust the Overwatchers. I felt something was wrong years ago. Under my desk, on floor 54, 
is a safe with a weapon in it. It is one of those used by the Blessed Militia. My brother has sent it to me. He says they are also not what they claim. They have done things to our fellows even more vile than what the unclean would do. He tells me to be ready to fight. I cannot. It is not me. I do not know violence. I am too frail. You. Use it. Save yourself. Safe Diary My name is Ervil Tallowis. I am a hard systems watcher here. My job is to monitor the sinful who bathe in the Lord's tears, and then make sure that they reach the prescribed dilution time. I have been doing this job for 23 years, and now, things are falling apart. I can no longer abide by the Most Holy. I must speak the truth. We are being told to evacuate. The containment tubes have been breached. An unclean has appeared in the Palace of Rest, and we are unable to destroy it. The live motion footage shows how it came to be, and this is what has unsealed my heart and mind and tongue. I must speak. Should the Overwatchers see this, I will be silenced, so I must hide it. Thankfully, they are ignorant with the hardware, so I can hide this easily. The Overwatchers told us we should leave last to ensure the hardware contains the unclean. What that means is we should distract it and die in case it breaches the watching decks. It has shattered nearly all the tubes and absorbed the people in them. I have dispatched the eyes to the unclean, and they have touched it, bringing me back a sample of it. The unclean are not sinners. They are not products of our disobedience. I suspect they are us. The eyes have dated the sample. It is older than myself. Older than my elders. It is over 200 cycles in age. 200! The sirens are still sounding, but no signal has come for us to leave. I do not think this unclean is alone. I have seen how they get into places, between places. Between places! Is that where they have been all this time? Between places? The makeup of the unclean is unstable. Molecules detach and reattach almost before my eyes, as if to move the entire thing reforms itself in space and time. Why does it not come up here? Too much effort? Or does it not sense me? They have no eyes. No mouth. No face. They cannot speak. Cannot see. But they must be able to sense us. The smell. It is so strong, it comes from all directions. It is not a smell of the dead. It is a smell that comes from something that should be dead, but does not know how to die. The War of the Holy Union. I think that was where it may have started. We are united under the Most Holy, but what does he owe us? Nothing. We merely keep society running while those on high benefit. Is this not how it has always been? But now, we are told we are pleasing the will of those above us in the clouds, those great beings who gave us the power to live and prosper. Those who we have never laid eyes upon, but are told we must revere. Lies. All of it. It must be. I am using the eyes to create a fluid to oppose the makeup of the unclean sample. Perhaps they will cancel each other out. I will leave soon and store the rounds here. I cannot use the weapon. I am too weak a man for this. I will protect my family with my mind and not my rage. We will be safe in the fields. I know where to go. I will go above now, to my family. I will leave the hardware running. I was told to turn it off, but this is where I defy them. It will run. This will watch. The eyes will see for however much time they have. Someone will read this, and someone will know. Take the gun. Take the fluid. Do not listen to the Most Holy. We did. And we are damned. 
is a revolver-style weapon with two 12-bullet cylinders. The design of the gun has one cylinder on each side, raised slightly so they may flip into the gun itself and then rotate, firing all rounds before flipping back out and allowing it to be reloaded while the second is usable, allowing a total of 24 shots before it runs empty. There is no firing pin on this gun, but instead there is a pullback slide mechanism that must be used to prime the active cylinder. At the time of recovering, all 24 slots contained a syringe-style bullet with 32 needles on the end. On impact, it is assumed the force of the shot will press the liquid inside into the target. None have been tested. Of express interest is that these cylinders can hold a standard 45 caliber ammunition, which has been tested. The gun uses an ultra-high power magnetic rail system to deliver the shots so the gunpowder in the bullet is never used. In consideration is a redesign of a round that would utilize the gunpowder mid-flight to add even higher velocity to the round, or that would explode on impact for higher yield.